Welcome back guys to Jarek the Journeyman. Today we're going to go over how to do load calculations on the standard method. I'm going to show you a few steps on that because we've been getting some requests on on how to do that and people have been having some problems with that. So let's jump into it. So let me get this all um, shared with you. All right. There we go. All right, guys, keep in mind that there are two different methods for um, calculating the service load. The uh, NEC allows us to do a standard calculations or an optional um, calculations. That's in part three is your standard and in part four is your optional. Today, we're going to touch on part three, the standard. So first off, in Article 100, we've got the definition of a dwelling unit, and it's a single unit that provides permanent provisions for living sleeping, cooking, and sanitation. That's the definition of a dwelling unit. All right, when we're doing the dwelling units, we got to take into consideration some demand factors and some factors in general based off different stuff. So in the 17, uh, NEC 17 for you guys that are still in it, we can look at table 220.42 and apply the general general lighting and general use receptacles and in table 220.52 that's where we come in and we add our small appliance circuits and our laundry circuit um now this is in um 2020 and it is the one family two family or multi-family dwellings the minimum unit load shall not be less than 33 volt meter volt amperes per meter squared or three volt amperes per foot squared so 3BA per foot, uh, square foot, I'm sorry, um, that's standard, and um, that does not change throughout the 17 through the 23, and it probably hasn't changed in a, quite a while. So if you guys are looking, if you guys look in 220.52, this is where we take and find our small appliance and laundry circuit requests on our loads, and when you're doing a dwelling, a uh, single family or multi uh single family or multifamily dwelling remember that you need two dedicated circuits in that kitchen um for those that have roughed up the uh, houses or done the residential site um you've always got to have at least two dedicated circuits in the kitchen and those are calculated at 1500 VA per per circuit and then you go down and on our laundry circuits, we have to have at least one dedicated um, laundry circuit. So that's another 1500 BA for that circuit. So keep in mind with that, with those two rules, we're adding 4,500 BA, <clears throat> excuse me, to our, our loads. And we'll need to know that once we start doing our calculations. Also, if you look in table 220.42, um, you'll see that there's a demand factor that we have to apply. So for the first 3,000 VA, 3,000 volt amperes, we apply 100% of the 3,000. After that, from 3,001 to 120,000, we apply a 35% demand factor on that. So guys, when you see demand factor and percentage, remember that's a multiplier. So um, we'll show you how this is gonna come into effect. What this is telling you is if you have a huge house, they're betting that you won't be able to use that whole house all at once, all the electrical appliances and all the receptacles and stuff. So after the first 3000 square feet, they're gonna give you, a, they're gonna knock it down a bunch and only apply a 35% demand factor on that. Um, if you want, go ahead and highlight that in your code book. Also highlight the warehouses. Warehouses also show up on your tests. So let's get started. Uh, what is the general receptacle and lighting demand factor for a 2,000 square foot dwelling unit? So we know we got 2,000 square feet. And then we go back and we know that um, according to the code, we have to allow 3 VA per square foot. So we take that 2,000 and we multiply it times three right here. 
which will give you six VA. And then don't forget, we need to add two small appliance circuits to it, which is another 3000 VA. Then we have to add one um, laundry circuit which is 1500 VA. So we get a grand total of, of 10,500 VA when we add all this up. Now, going back to our demand factor, we, we take 10,500 and we subtract 3000 from that because we got 100% at 3000 and we get a remainder of 7,500. Now we take that 700, uh, 7,500 and multiply it times 0.35. That's your 35% that um, it tells us in our table. So we have a, at 35%, we got 2,625. Now, that's not our answer there. We have to remember, we took the first 3,000 out and now we have 2,625. Now we need to combine that all back together excuse me, and now that's going to be 5,625 VA. So our total demand load with no other information given is 5,625 VA. If they're asking for amperage, we do a little Ohm's law, take um, two, uh, 5,625 divided by 240, which is our voltage, and then we'll get an amperage off of that. So we apply that Ohm's law, but guys, that's your first three steps in determining your general lighting and circuitry load. Now there's other steps beyond that, that we can get into and get the complete load of the house. We'll have to take the electric range and the dryer and some other small appliances. And if we have more than four or four or more, we can uh, use 75% but that's further on in. Um, I'm just seeing if you guys like this. If you guys are getting something out of this, please let me know. Leave a comment below. Leave me a thumbs up, whatever it is. And we can continue with this general lighting and circuitry load for a single family dwelling. And also, guys, if I'll leave a link below and, and a slide in here, that'll show you that we also have a private Facebook group that we go over this stuff regularly and get more in depth in it that you guys can join. Um, and there's a monthly subscription to it and we go over all the calculations and codes for people trying to get prepped up and get ready for their journeyman's tests. So give that a, a look if you guys are interested in that. But that's all I have for today. So you guys um, work on these um, calculations. You can go in here and change the numbers around. But uh, besides that, you guys be safe out there. Thank you for watching.